Hey, this is the video for 2.1, Periodic Table Arrangement. So go ahead and set up a new entry in your Cornell Notes. Remember to start a new page for this video. Also, check out the essential vocabulary. Today we'll be discussing chemical property, period, metal, non-metal, metalloid, physical property, and group. So in the 1860s, a chemist by the name of Dmitry Mendeleev uh, from Russia, he noticed some chemical properties among different elements. And a chemical property is simply a characteristic of an element that can be observed in a chemical reaction. So he noticed that certain elements were able to react with other elements in a particular fashion. And he noticed that these uh, elements had similarities and he arranged them by their order of reactivity and also by their atomic mass. And he noticed that certain trends or certain, certain trends kept appearing periodically. So he arranged them according to the reactivity, and this is the basis for the modern periodic table. In fact, this was so successful that he was able to successfully um, identify the properties of elements that hadn't even been discovered yet. So the modern periodic table, and this is the periodic table that you will see in your reference table, but the modern periodic table looks like this. They're arranged across a period and up and down in groups. Across a period, the atomic number increases. As you notice, we have it's labeled here period. We have seven periods going across. And we have 18 groups going up and down. Notice group is at the top, periods on the side. This is something they like to ask you a lot. And the periodic, the periodic table has groups arranged according to their chemical properties. And this is what Mendeleev actually noticed. And the reason they have similar chemical properties is because of their valence electrons. So these valence electrons, uh, they're all the same, except in groups 3 through 12. It gets a little bit, little bit dicey in there, but we'll talk about that in the future. But groups 1, 2, and 13 through 18 all have the same number of valence electrons. So we also have physical properties. Physical properties are a characteristic of an element that can be observed without changing that element's identity. In other words, you're not causing a chemical reaction, you're not um, changing it into something else. And physical properties can range from boiling point and melting point, um, but also other physical properties that I'll discuss now. So we're going to describe the physical properties of metals and nonmetals. And I'm also going to explain metalloids, because metalloids have properties of both metals and nonmetals. And we're going to discuss both physical and chemical properties. Um, before we do, I want you to notice that the metalloids are all found along this staircase. And the staircase is drawn in your periodic table. And also, uh, everything along here is a metalloid except for aluminum. And that should be easy to remember because think about aluminum cans and aluminum foil. It's, uh, it's very metallic in nature. So that should be an easy way to remember. Everything up here is nonmetals and also hydrogen. Hydrogen was placed over here because it has one valence electron. Okay, so everything here is metal. Everything in blue is nonmetal. So I'm going to discuss the physical properties and I would like you to set up a T-chart to discuss this. But metals have luster. They are shiny. Metals conduct heat and electricity. This little E with the dash, that's a symbol for an electron. But the flow of electrons is technically what electricity is. So oftentimes you may see electricity indicated like that. Um, at least that's how I would indicate it a lot of times in class. And also metals are malleable, which means they can be bent into particular shapes without breaking. Now nonmetals, on the other hand, are dull. They don't shine. They are not conductive for heat or electricity. Also, they are brittle. If you bend them, they will break. So their chemical properties are based off of what happens with their electrons. Metals lose electrons, and they're going to lose their valence electrons. And nonmetals will gain electrons. They want to fill their outer shell. So both metals and nonmetals want to get to that magic number of 8 with their octet. Now what I would like you to do is respond to this check for understanding. I hope that this video was informative. I thank you very much for your attention and I will see you soon.